where do I even begin? Like, where do I even start? Like, who the hell created that thing, guys? Like, was it a man? Like, you joke. Have you seen how that thing looks like? <laughs> I am Dr. N and welcome to the Health Hub. So today's topic of discussion is contraceptives. I will be going through the various methods of contraception, um, the pros and the cons, the side effects. I will also be looking at um, availability and tell you guys a bit about price points, uh, both in private and public sectors. Now, this is a topic that resonates with many people. Growing up in rural Eastern Cape, um, the use of contraceptives was something that was seen to be shameful back then and still is today. Uh, mainly because it was probably an indication that one was sexually active or doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing. Um, I suppose it's only human nature for one to impose their moral standing or values on others. Forgetting that as women, we all have the freedom and the right to make decisions concerning our life and our bodies. I am, however not condoning our, or promoting um, early sexual debut. So the aim is to normalize having such discussions so that we put an end to stigmas associated with the use of contraceptives because these stigmas only fuel to um, what still is the biggest burden of disease in South Africa, which is HIV, as well as teenage pregnancy. So um, without further ado, let's get to the video. I will be dividing the video into two parts. The first part will cover natural uh, methods of contraception as well as barrier methods. Then I'll drop another video where I'll be going through um, hormonal methods of contraception as well as surgical methods of contraception. It's means of preventing pregnancy and the aim is family planning as well as STI prevention. See, I don't want to bore you with the science, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> How contraceptives work is that they work at different levels in the reproductive system. First of all, they can work at the level of the egg, preventing you from releasing an egg, therefore preventing ovulation. Number two, they can work at the level of the fallopian tube by um, affecting motility of the tube. Because in the tube, there's hair-like structures called cilia that push the egg from the end of the egg to the uterus side or the side of the womb. Number three, they can work at the, at the uterus or at the womb itself, making the environment unfavorable for the attachment of the egg. And then at the level of the cervix, that's where you get the barrier method. So they can prevent sperm from going through into, um, into the womb or they can um, act at the cervix by thickening or affecting the, the cervical discharge so as to affect motility of the sperm. So the sperm would be like swimming in glue instead of it just swimming right through. So it thickens the, the consistency of the cervical discharge. So some will work at different levels. Other will cover all of the levels um, and in that way prevent you from getting pregnant and also from getting STIs. Mainly the ones that will prevent you from getting STIs, the barrier method. Okay, let's get to the natural methods of contraception. Where do I even begin? Like, where do I even start? These methods are quite, hmm, they no longer use, they're very outdated. Uh, people who tend to lean towards these natural methods of contraception, either people who are um, not having sex frequently, uh, people who are against hormonal methods of contraception because of maybe religious disbelief, or some people just, tend to think of the hormonal methods as methods that just pump uh, hormones into your system. So it could be people who are against um, maybe the hormonal methods because of the side effect profile. So if you fall into one of these categories, I'll be going through the natural methods uh, just to further explain them to you. Number one is abstinence. So abstinence is, by definition, avoidance of vaginal intercourse, avoidance of oral and anal intercourse and avoidance of genital contact of any kind that could be just rubbing 
because we know that that can lead to pregnancy um, even without penetration so abstinence seem to be the only method that offers a hundred percent protection over pregnancy as well as stis the problem however with abstinence is that a lot of people don't commit or stick to it or people tend to put themselves in compromising positions while they're saying that they're abstaining and then they end up then having sexual intercourse and um, because they don't have any backup they end up falling pregnant and we've seen a lot of people basically fall into this trap so don't let it be you if you're one of these people or who are into the whole abstinence route you have to um put in the work basically because now guys near time to abstain until you meet or mr then all bets are off number two the rhythm method so it's also known as the calendar method so with this method you basically um avoid having sex during certain days of the month uh which is usually during the time when you're ovulating so the important thing about this one is that you have to know when you're ovulating and to know when you're ovulating you have to monitor your cycle over six months and um, check your temperature every day throughout your cycle so that you're able to know when you're ovulating because you tend to have a peak in your temperature um, when you are ovulating and then avoid having sexual contact uh, three to five days before and three to five days after your your ovulation period then basically you will then know which days are your safe ones or you can just download an app to know your safe days so basically this method does not offer it's not quite safe it's basically what people did in the olden days there's there's very high failure rate with this method according to the articles 24 in 100 women will fall pregnant within the first year of using the rhythm method so if this is your cup of tea google babes the third method is coitus interruptus also known as pulling out hold up hold up hold up Say what? Here, a guy pulls out before they ejaculate, and the problem with this method is that um, there's pre uh, ejaculation can contain sperm, spermatozoa or sperms, and the second thing about this method is timing. So it has to be timed properly, or else um, basically it fails and you end up falling pregnant. So the failure rate with this method is twenty two percent. So Basically, you have a 22% chance of getting pregnant when doing this. And it is dependent on the guy. This method, however, takes away the power from the lady. And basically, everything will depend on the guy. Um, and Akua Bridgerton, Alpha, it doesn't work. You will probably, most likely, get pregnant. So, number four is lactational amenorrhea. So, basically, sometimes when a woman is breastfeeding, after having a baby they don't um, get their period and this is because there's high prolactin levels uh, which is a hormone that are circulating that prevents you or affects the whole reproductive system and menstrual cycle so then women will end up not getting a period with this method you have to bear in mind that there's prerequisites i.e you are exclusively breastfeeding so your child can't be getting formula or any form of other food outside of their breast so um, this is normally usually the first six months after getting a baby. The other thing is that you have to breastfeed every three to four hours during the day, every six hours um, at night. So you can't miss the night feed. So the failure rate of lact lactational amenorrhea is around 2%. And it's pretty out of the natural methods of contraception is the better one in terms of, you know, working. But there have been people who have experienced um, pregnancy even with or even after doing all of these things personally i have dabbled around with the natural methods of contraception but they're a bit risque so do watch out whenever we're using them or at least use two or three in conjunction so as to prevent you from actually falling pregnant so now let's look at barrier methods of contraception so basically e barrier methods of contraception they prevent entry to begin with they also uh, offer protection from ESTIs. So there's um, number one, the most commonly used, the condom. So condoms prevent the ejaculate from actually entering, hence why they also offer protection from STIs. 
the problem with them is that they use a dependent i've heard a lot of people say and it's normally people who are not putting it right so the most important thing that you have to ensure your partner is doing is at least squeezing the front part to let all the air out because if there's air within the whole system that then causes the increased pressure and therefore the it be bursting or displacing incorrect use tends to become the biggest issue number two the femidom like who the hell created that thing guys like was it a man like you joke have you seen how that thing looks like <laughs> it's a joke like because wow the whole like the whole thought process behind it is just the whole logic behind it so you put it in before you have sexual intercourse so you don't put it in right before you put in maybe a couple of hours before uh, but it has a ring on both sides so that it fits around um, almost around the cervix um, and then it will hang outside and it offers the woman control the problem with this method is that most women won't know when it's going to happen how it's going to happen where it's going to happen so this method sort of is very restrictive and it requires discipline or the most problematic thing about this method is displacement and improper you improperly inserting it and it's just wrong like yeah it's and bora actually like so if so the failure rate of the femidom is 21 percent so it's you know it's around um 79 percent effective then we call cervical caps cervical caps sit around the cervix like this this is this is the cervix which is the mouth of the womb and it sits on the surface like that preventing any ejaculate from entering on the side uh, cervical caps however tend to be mm, somewhat more effective in women who are nulliparous women who've never had babies or have never had their cervix dilated the failure rate is around 26 percent in people who've never had kids because at least the cervix is still small whereas um failure rate is a lot higher in women the high with higher priority so i guess the problems become the sensation especially for the for the guy then they can feel they can feel it at the end and also for the ladies it tends to be problematic in that the cup sometimes irritates the cervix and in, and can cause some sort of like inflammation or cervicitis um so and it can even displace or move around I've never seen them in in public uh places in these cervical camps but i guess you can get them in private but in public we don't really offer them we only offer femidoms as well as um normal condoms pay for free so number four we have sponges and spermicides it's like a sperm or oh, spermicides are like sperm killing agents um so they come in different forms they come in um, gel forms and also sponge forms so basically you insert it and it kills the ejaculate that will be inside this method however will not form protection from stis and stds it only will assist with pregnancy or prevention of pregnancy failure rate is around 26 percent when improperly used but if, if there's a right technique and um, basically you use it the way it's meant to be used then um, it can go down to at least six percent the advantage with this method is that it's inexpensive and it offers good protection some some of the disadvantages regarding this method is that sometimes it can get messy and with some women it can cause local irritation spermicides you can get over the counter so yeah let's go into frequently asked questions condom allergy it's not really um so it depends so most people tend to be if you are allergic to latex and the condom is made out of latex then you will get some local irritation or some form of a contact dermatitis around the area but you'll also be allergic to latex gloves so it won't only happen down there if it, it's only happening down there then it's not just latex maybe it's a certain ingredient that you're allergic to or a type of an oil so do um, then investigate in those cases where you're getting rashes down there and you don't know why. Also, um, don't you have to visit your doctor so that they um, check and don't just look at it as just a rash because it could be a form of an STI. So the other frequently, so the other frequently asked question is whether or not you can get pregnant without penetration, and the answer is yes. Yes, you can fall pregnant 
um, especially with if there's only even if there's just friction on the outside provided that the person yeah basically ejaculates so it is possible possible because there is contact and therefore when there is contact of some form even if there's not full penetration the um some pre-ejaculate can escape and go in and sometimes even if the guy ejaculates then it could, you could still fall pregnant so i guess the take-home message regarding these the natural as well as the barrier method is that condoms are the mainstay of protection against both pregnancy and sti and that condoms should be mixed with whichever method you choose just so as to make ensure that you are also protected not only from pregnancy but also from from stds um, other than that stay safe stay safe so if you have any questions regarding natural methods as well as barrier methods of contraception be sure to um just write a comment or share your experiences because i'm pretty certain that the natural methods i am not the only one i, I refuse i refuse to be the only one who has been dribbled by natural methods of contraception so if you have a story to tell regarding natural methods of contraception that you've tried that have dribbled you make sure you comment write down your story so that i mean we learn from it we live and we learn Let's make sure you like the video share comment subscribe also watch out for my second video on um on hormonal methods of contraception which are the most commonly used especially in south africa by women so yeah catch you on my next video